Today's episode of Style Series is brought to you by Mighty Boards. Mighty Boards are our favorite tester boards of choice because they're large and flexible, paintable boards that you can use to test out your paint colors on all of your projects. We love testing colors here because you want to be sure that the color is right before you paint your entire house with it. And what better way to create your own giant tester boards by grabbing some tester paint and putting it on a Mighty Board. They're also resistant to warping and bending, which means they're going to lie flat against whatever surface you use it on. Don't start your next project with without them. When you're testing out your paint colors, go mighty. As always, their information is down in the description so you can check them out and pick them up for yourself. We're talking about grand millennial style today, the interior design craze that's been sweeping the nation. I'm gonna tell you what it is, what makes it popular, and maybe some tips on how to execute it. Also, some paint colors that I enjoy with it. Honestly, y'all, when I first heard grand millennial, I thought it meant like super millennial or something. Like, I feel like such an idiot. A somewhat contemporary millennial style, but like amped up all the way. Nope, totally wrong. The grand in grand millennial is taken from grandparent, grandma, grandpa. A large part of it is repurposing granny's old furniture, leaning into those more floral patterns, perhaps more traditional design forms altogether. It's sometimes also called granny chic, which I think is kind of cool too. It's an interior design style that really just doesn't take itself too seriously at all, I find. So I feel like a lot of people were just tired of this kind of stuffy, minimalist, like ultra chic, ultra modern vibe. So they kind of went the opposite way. So I think this whole grand millennial movement was birthed out of a couple things, right? It started from a place of nostalgia, but I also think necessity, and I'll tell you why. I think young adults of my generation wanted to be reminded of their childhood, those fond memories, those comforting times where maybe they used to go to grandma and grandpa's place on the weekends, and they look back fondly on those times. So there is this kind of need to bring that joy and comfort into their current living condition. But I also think necessity is a big part of it too because houses aren't cheap and maybe people didn't have the money to go buy a whole new set of furniture after spending all that money on a down payment or a deposit on a lease. A lot of money, right? So why not start yourself off with some pieces inherited from your relatives, namely your older relatives, and then kind of just double down on that aesthetic and that vibe. And why not go full on grainy chic, right? That's kind of the thinking behind it. Another reason for the rise in grand millennial design to me is maybe a bit of a contrarian approach to design. So lots of people will gravitate towards the opposite of what's popular in my mind. And what's more opposite from gray, beige, and grayish than bright pink and teal floral wallpaper? <laughs> Right, so you have this sort of thing where maybe people were just tired of the whole stuffy, neutral, kind of clean, slightly scandy aesthetic that's been sort of circulating. Maybe they got a great sofa set from their grandparents that have been reupholstered like five times. And then instead of just trying to make that work, they kind of make that their design. And then of course there's everyone else that just love the design for what it is, right? Bright colors, big comfy round soft edges, lace, embroidery, all that good stuff. Nothing wrong with that either. Growing up, I was surrounded by a lot of antiques. My parents, they loved them and they had them back in their home country. And when they came back here, they wanted to sort of replicate that feel themselves. And they are involved in the design world as well. They're artists actually, but I do have a little attachment to certain pieces, certain antique elements that could also be a version of grand millennial style because you're repurposing those old pieces and sort of building around it. My approach is maybe much smaller than going full on, but it just goes to show you, you don't need to re wallpaper your house just to sort of have this element in your design. To me, I think an effective way of approaching grand millennial design is approaching it like a good story where you kind of end where you started, but sort of different than before. And what I mean by that is where you started is actually where your grandparents were. So it's their kind of stuff, but now you're reimagining it and sort of reinterpreting it in a more modern sense. Really it's about embracing those fond memories, but sort of transplanting it into 2022, 2023. You have to remember it's grand millennial, not grandma, okay? No, I'm checking the weather. The goal isn't to replicate a home 
exactly the way it was in the 1920s because I think they barely had fridges back then. <laughs> you need a fridge. You simply wanna add some key elements that are indicative of the style. And the easiest and perhaps most common way is to inherit some lovely pieces from your parents, your grandparents, or your great grandparents. I guess that would become great grand millennial style. You'll notice a lot of fun textural elements, some of which are quite popular even in modern furniture stores, like rattan and bamboo. Those materials really suit granny chic. And you can also add some good old wicker for good measure. Also all those lovely fabrics like linens, lace, embroidery, and anything textural and nice and round with ruffles and pleats, all that good stuff. But Grand Millennial style, it's not all fun and games, okay? Gumba, gumba, gumba. Gumba, gumba, gumba. Grandma, those aren't turkeys. There are some things that you need to be aware of so you can accomplish it properly, in my mind. The style itself can look cluttered. So what I say is just try holding on to pieces that you genuinely enjoy, in addition to holding that sentimental value. It's kind of a happy medium. It's important to know how to edit. So pick and choose pieces that really lend themselves to the overall design. I'm sure you've seen a ton of examples online of grand millennial rooms that are just full on, full out. But don't feel like you gotta do that to your space. You don't need to fill it with all the colors, all the patterns. Now, if you don't have the luxury of fun hand-me-downs, you can always check your local thrift shops, antique stores, markets, even garage sales for some hidden gems. Another surefire way to add some granny chic charm is to opt for bold patterns in your curtains, your fabrics in general, and of course, wallpaper is another obvious option. But it can also be a more permanent feeling one. It's easier to change out your pillowcases than your walls. So just be really mindful and sure that this is where you wanna go. Also be careful with color, I guess, but not too careful. You're able to amp up the saturation of your colors with this style, so you can go a little bolder, a little bit brighter, but still try and follow some of those key color rules. So you might've heard me talk about 60, 30, 10, which is essentially 60% one primary color, 30% a secondary color, and then 10% an accent color. So there is a sense of balance. Try exploring complementary colors as well for something a little more dynamic. So by that, I mean opposite ends of the color wheel. But again, make sure it's a nice balance of the two. And if you're unsure about what colors to use, sometimes it's fun to lean in the colors from those hand-me-downs that you already have. So if you got a really great chair, maybe pull some colors from that and then go from there. The ultimate key to pulling off Grand Millennial Granny Chic is try to be timeless rather than dated. Make sure you use pieces that bring you joy. I can't emphasize that enough. Pick colors that keep the space cohesive and some wall colors that I can recommend are actually not overly vibrant, believe it or not, which is not what you might expect. Taylor Tack is a barely there pink that feels soft and delicate. I think it's a great place to start. Skimmed Milk White is another color. It's a warm and gentle take on cream that feels a little bit modernized with a touch of gray. Because we all know Granny didn't believe in skimmed milk. It was all about that whole milk, full fat baby. Keep you nice and strong. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> all right. Also, you'll see a lot of these dusty blues like Hazy. So this one will stand out a little bit more than those other neutral options, but it still has a softened, nostalgic look to it. The reason I picked these more softer colors overall is it'll allow your accessories and your fabrics to really be the standout. My approach is keep your walls a little more in the background, but still have some of those common elements. And then if you wanted to really go crazy with your walls, you can go with wallpaper. And there's some beautiful Ted Baker wallpaper in this video that would really suit Granny Chic to a T. T as in Ted Baker, obviously. 